Hi everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. Here is another preview of one of my full length tutorials over on Patreon. I've uploaded this as a short on my YouTube channel, but it has been requested as something slightly lengthier so people can just see the process before signing up to my Patreon. And obviously learning the full thing from start to finish is about six hours in length. So this is just condensed slightly into just under an hour for you. This particular tutorial is all about light subjects with really subtle temperature changes. So you may look at the wolf and think, oh, it's just got a couple of gray tones, a couple of white tones, but in actual fact, he is full of cool tones and warm tones. And this lesson is all about picking out where they sit in the reference photo and which tones to use it's very important not to use anything too drastically cold or too drastically warm because the tones are very, very subtle because it is a light subject. This wolf also has really lovely eyes. So you can see they're quite light in tone, but they do have some green, purple and yellow hints to them. So I've picked those out from the reference photo. And obviously in the full length tutorial, I'll be taking you through which tones I specifically use. They're very much hidden tones. If you zoom in quite a lot, you can pick them out in the reference photo, but you wouldn't necessarily think, oh, there would be green in this eye. So I use quite a lot of this Faber-Castell olive green yellow, which is a lovely mid-tone green. It's nothing too bright, nothing too garish. It's just a nice tone that won't take too much away from the yellow, which is the majority tone in this eye. And these are very small eyes, but I managed to pack quite a lot of detail into them. So smaller obviously means that you can't quite pack in as many details as a larger eye, but it's still not a good idea to skimp on those details. So try and get as much as you can in with your pastel pencils. Obviously, just try and make sure they're nice and sharp so you can be quite precise when you apply the tone down. The other reason why I wanted to pull together this wolf lesson is because it's quite hard light fur compared to darker fur. It's quite a challenging layering process. A lot of people get it a little bit wrong and they go into light and then what happens is you don't get a lot of depth in your work and it's really important to have depth in this particular subject because wolves have this really lovely thick coat particularly in the chest area which you'll see when we move on to that area I'll zoom out in the reference photo. The other wonderful thing about this portrait is the wolf has a nice contrast between really light fur particularly down the nose, and then you've got the slightly medium fur above, so I'll be showing you the slightly different layering process for those different areas. So a little tip with these eyes, always try and get a little bit of a blue tone in for the highlight, and that just helps the eyes to look nice and glassy. So even if you can't see too many hints in the photograph of a blue, always try and get a little bit in as the base underneath the white, and it does help to make that white just pop out even more and really give it a good glow. So the nose is a really nice and dark one. We have got quite a bit of shine up the top, but because it is majority dark, I've blocked it in with a light layer of my black, and then I can start to lift the different areas in a moment. But for now, it's just about starting to layer up. I've just given that another layer of black there, so it's a little bit darker. And then I always take a pastel pencil just to define the nose, obviously, Pastel base work can be a little bit messy, so if you want to pull out the edges a little bit neater, you can go in with your pastel pencil. The shine on noses, it's always a good idea to get tones like purples or blues in. Just helps the nose to look really shiny and also nice and wet as well. So we want a nice healthy nose here. So 
and then obviously what you can start to do once those initial layers are down is start to lift and usually with these details on the nose I tend to just roughly mark make so I don't try and get every single little mark or little bump exactly as it is in the photograph because you would just drive yourself mad it's just about applying these random little marks and then once you've added enough they will start to make a lot of sense and just start to form a really nice textured top of the nose here and then you can start to lift them with some light greys some light blues as well just to really pull out that shine So the base work for the face up the top here, obviously it is more medium in tone, although we have got some light hairs mixed in as well. So it's quite a confusing area in terms of do I start dark, do I start light? I would personally recommend always starting a little bit dark, but because this isn't a really dark black area of fur, I've just given it a very thin layer of black there. So we don't want to go too heavy. You can always darken up later on with some dark hair details, but just get a nice thin layer in to start. And then for the lighter fur, I'm using a nice light beige tone, but nothing as bright as a white just yet, because it's not really pristine. Uh, in terms of the, the coat isn't really bright white. There are lots of these dark, darker tones going on. We've got lots of these dark hair details. So we don't want it to be so bright also that it's going to contrast really dramatically next to our medium fur above the eyes. So this is how I would layer up this type of fur. So nice lighter beige tone where those more noticeable lighter areas sit and then obviously those darker areas above the eyes we're starting off with a slightly darker base there. So the majority of the wolf is warm in tone especially where I'm adding these beige tones but the area above the eyes is actually colder in tone. So I've started off with a black, which is a neutral tone, but I'm going to start to add in some cooler tones just to make it a little bit colder. And what I'm doing to start to bring a little bit of light fur texture in on top of that medium area of fur is using my white from Smink just to pick out some rough hair direction there. And you'll see once I start blending it with my sponge, we get some nice movement in there, starts to cover that darker area to make it a little bit lighter in tone, which is what we want at the moment. It's sitting too dark, but that's actually exactly what we want. We don't want to start too light for that area. So we're starting to just push this pigment out in the direction that the fur is going. I don't tend to flatly blend much with my work. I find my fur looks so much thicker and has more dynamic movement if I try and blend out in the direction that the fur is going and it starts to give it that really nice painterly effect as well. Now with light fur, it's always a good idea to keep layering up. It's never just a case of one or two layers. You do need quite a few to bring it up to the level that you need to. That looks similar to what we can see in the photograph. But I'm always very gentle and very light and thin with my layers. It's not about getting one thick layer in. You want to apply quite a few but nice and thin so you can keep them nice and buildable, but you're also not saturating the paper. So a common mistake with base layers is you just go in too hard, too thick with the first one or two layers, 
and then what that's going to do is just really really saturate your paper if you are using pastel matte paper it has that tooth which is a nice grain and what it does is it grips onto that pigment and that's what I love about pastel matte paper is it really really takes these layers well however if you're pressing down really hard and getting a really thick layer on it's going to just fill that tooth up way too quickly pastel matte paper generally can take about 10 thin layers but if you're adding them thickly then it's just going to fill up that tooth too quickly and you're going to once you get to the detail stage just be working on completely smooth surface, which you don't want. You still want some of that nice tooth in there, even at the end of the base stage, because obviously with the hair details, they need to be able to grip onto something instead of just a thick layer of pastel. I think most of us have been there where you've applied it too thickly and you try to draw some hair details on top, and it's just utterly useless. You're, you're just kind of cutting through this thick base and there's nothing underneath to grip onto. And it's just so frustrating. But I think there's also people who go the other way and don't apply enough base or too thin a base because they're a little bit nervous, especially with the darker subjects of going too dark. But my advice would be it's always better to go a little bit darker than start too light. It's always easier to lighten than it is to darken up. So you'll see here I'm adding a little bit of a nice medium yellow tone up the top there. That's to really warm up the fur. You can really, really see now these different tonal changes that I've added into the fur now. We've got some nice cool tone above the eyes there. And then we've got a nice warm tone in the beige fur, but they're not so heavy and so dramatic that they look too unnatural and too odd next to each other. Cold next to warm can clash. So it's about just adding them in really nice and subtly. In fur, you're never really going to have a really drastic change between cold and warm unless it's something like maybe a, a chameleon or something that's bright in color. But with fur like this, there's always going to be a smooth transition, even if it is a really cold area of fur next to a warmer area of fur, you're always going to have this kind of transition in between, a merge in between that just brings the two together a little bit more naturally, a bit more slowly, instead of having a really harsh border between the both of them where it kind of jumps one straight into the other. So what I can do now is start to add some very light dark hair details into this area of fur here. So we can see plenty of them in the photograph, but I don't want to press too heavy. We basically want the fur to look as thick as possible. If you're adding really thick, harsh lines down that are a lot heavier, what's going to happen is you're going to fill up the paper or the area a lot quicker so you won't have too many gaps going on because these hairs are so much thicker than these thin ones that I'm adding in here. If you add them in thin, it means there's more space to apply more hairs. There's more gaps, if that makes sense. So in order for the fur to look nice and dense and really full, try and work really feather light. You can practice on a separate piece of pastel mark if you're not quite sure about the pressure, but basically the lighter you work these hairs in, the thinner and wispier they're going to come out. So the harder you press, the thicker and more harsh they'll come out. So we do want to try and keep our hand nice and loose and not press down too hard. I don't tend to work hard in general. I'm very loose with my pressure and it does make my work a lot more free and a lot 
have a lot more movement to it as well and it stops these hairs from coming out too stiff as well so obviously if you have more control with your pastel pencil it actually makes the hairs come out a lot more straight a lot stiffer whereas if you were to just loosen your pressure a little bit it does make them come out with more movement and more curve as well which is sometimes better because you do want a lot of this nice freedom and movement in fur So I'm really starting to fill the fur now with these lighter hair details. So I'm using a mix of a warm light grey tone and a cool light grey tone. So the warm grey tone goes in the lighter beige area fur and then the cooler grey will sit in the area above the eyes. So I'm using a little bit of ivory as well which is the yellow base so that's great for the warmer areas of fur. And try and bring warm a few warm hairs into the border of the cold area and vice versa and it just makes sure there isn't a really sharp divide and line between our cold area and our warm area. Try and just pull a few of the different hues into each other and it just helps emerge those areas really nicely. So I always like to just gently smooth as I go and that helps to make the fur a little bit more seamless and gets rid of any harsh darker lines. So just continuing to lighten now down in between the eyes here with my titanium white from Spilo 100. So if you were to join my Patreon channel you'll get this tutorial completely full length so it's real time and it's about six hours long so you get a link to each different part you get the reference photo and outline and a picture of my artwork as well if you just want to refer back to it so you will also get the materials list so every single tone that I'm using but obviously I appreciate not everyone can get hold of every single brand so I am always at hand if you need an alternative so say you use Smink instead of Unison then I can provide you with alternatives. The other wonderful thing about my Patreon channel is I've been doing it now for just over three years so I have a huge backlog of lessons it is vast and the library is available to view on my website or in the collections tab on Patreon so it is a subscription service it's very very cheap monthly and you can quit anytime so if you only want to stay for one month and just access a couple of tutorials then that is absolutely fine there's no contract when you sign up you can also request to get the tutorial as just a one-off without signing up to Patreon. So if you like the look of this wolf, for example, but don't want to join Patreon because I know some people aren't that keen on subscriptions, then you can just message me or just comment below or send me an email. And what I can do is send you payment details and the links for this lesson. Again, I keep it nice and affordable for you.
in the rest of this tutorial, I take you through those fluffy ears, which are really yellow based. So I'll be using a lot of different yellow tones for that area. And then I will be working on the cheeks and the chest as well, which are really fluffy, really dense. So you'll see me build up quite a lot of layers, mainly with my soft pastel sticks because they're a lot easier to blend. But I will be mixing a little bit of pastel pencils in there as well at the base stage, just to be a little bit more precise and get more tones in there as well. So working on the ears now, there's quite a light outline going on, so I'm using a white and then there's a lot of yellow going on as well. So I'm using a mix of yellow tones and brown tones as well to get some depth into the ear. There's obviously a little branch in the way of this ear, but we're looking past that, ignoring it, and just seeing what we can see through the little sticks there. So a lot of softening here, just to make sure that ear looks nice and seamless and fluffy as well. So even though this area is a lot smaller than the face, we're still adding lots and lots of base layers to build up this fur texture. So a lot of layers here, we're really starting to thicken up and make these tones a lot stronger. So if you want them to look vibrant, obviously this ear is nice and yellow, then you need to keep adding in your tones as you blend and as you work up, and it just makes sure that they remain nice and strong. adding lots and lots of hair layers as well to make sure the ear looks nice and hairy. If the fur looks like it's got a lot of layers, then you need to mimic that with your hair details. So you need to add lots and lots of hair details in as well. The more hair details you add in terms of the layers, then obviously the thicker the fur is going to look.
doing the exact same thing on the other ear, so the same process. Lots of these nice light hairs to lift and just make it really nice and bright. down to the nose now I'm going to start off with a little bit of a dark base even though it is a light area of fur you'll see down the center there's this dark section going on so I'm mapping that in with a little bit of dark sepia from Faber Castell 175 which is warm base so that's important for this area So going in with my soft pastels now to begin to build up that lighter base. So we don't want to start too bright with a white. We're starting off with a slightly lighter beige tone here. It's my Natural Earth 18 from Unison. So we're just getting a light layer in there to begin to lift it. And I'm not flatly blending. I'm just working it out in the rough direction that I can see in the photograph as rough marks here. So that makes sure I don't cover up all of that darker base underneath, which is really important.
So I'm going to leave you in peace for the rest of this preview. If you have any questions about it, then pop them in the comments below. Really hope you enjoy the rest of this preview. And I also hope to see you on Patreon very, very soon. Again, if you do have any questions about Patreon or how to join, or if you did want a one-off download, then just comment below. Or if you have me on my social channels, then just drop me a private message.